It's Monday, May 30th, 2022. I'm Jonathan Lau, and this is 5 Minutes of Proof, a weekly analysis of the science behind ozone therapy. Today, we're going to look at an article entitled, Updated Review on Ozone Therapy in Pain Medicine. It was introduced into the Frontiers in Physiology Journal in 2022. It comes to us from Spain. There's a lot of uses of ozone in pain. And they make this statement, ozone therapy in medicine is a growing reality. And there are more and more professionals using medical ozone as a therapeutic tool for different diseases related to chronic oxidative stress and inflammation, including chronic pain. The link between those two is oftentimes there. They talk about the... NRF2 pathway and how it induces that pathway and how it shuts down for these particular, at least pain uh, related indications, the NFKB pathway, which uh, is basically reducing inflammation. Um, we're not going to get into that. We've done that before. They say this, the forms of application of medical ozone are basically three, topical, infiltrative, and systemic. Now, I've always broken them down into two, local and, and uh, systemic, because that's um, what you typically see. But this is interesting that they talk about topical, meaning like ozone oils and ozonated fluids, infiltrative, injecting ozone gas typically into specific points and systemic things like rectal insufflation and major autohemotherapy. Just thought I would point that out. We're going to move through this quickly. Neat little graphic here that just shows the, the proposed mechanism of action that they're talking about here with pain. Dosage. This is uh, good um, because again, practically we need to know what doses to use. Regarding dosage, standardized protocols are lacking. So maybe we would, we don't know. <laughs> Most authors relate the amount of the gas mixture to the extension of the um, injury or to the size of the joint cavity to be infiltrated. I think the extent of the injury is what they're trying to say. Generally, the amounts of gas range between 5 and 15 milliliters. This is in humans. And ozone concentrations range from 4 to 30 micrograms. The number of infiltration sessions usually range from 3 to 10, usually one or two per week, depending on the specific evolution of each case. Okay, so that at least gives us some general information to take a look at. Um, and as they go through here, they look at knee pathology, shoulder pathology, spinal pathology, um, which is helpful to break it down that way. They just took and did here in this chart that uh, a review of how ozone therapy did um, systemic reviews and meta-analyses um, that were done on using ozone for pain and just noting that ozone was uh, a good treatment for a lot of these things. Not necessarily always better um, than your traditional treatment. So you have to take that into account. We have to be realistic on some of that, but uh, it, it was overall good. So they go through lots and lots and lots of studies, lots of cases and, and information, and we don't have time to do that. Um, but here um, we're taking a look at this one. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm jumping around. A very significant improvement was achieved in 95.6 of the patients at the first month follow-up, 87.7 at the first year visit, and persisted at the end of the follow-up at 84.1 of the sample. Now, my point in this, um, so this was intradiscal ozone, was just to show at uh, various stages of follow-up that there was still significant difference or improvement in these patients when they had gotten the, these ozone treatments. They got one case of discitis and 11 cases of temporary headache, uh, low back pain. They found a significant reduction of the size of the hernia. So these were herniated patients and 79% of the patients at 24 months. That's pretty incredible. Um, so uh, very safe, very effective. One of the things that is pointed out here is really the comparing ozone with your typical injections, um, the benefit of ozone over those, you know, um, is, is pretty significant at times, even when we're not talking about efficacy, which of course we always would. <laughs> um, but beyond that, there are some really significant ways in which ozone can benefit. So, um, one, one final note before we end for today. An absolute contraindication is severe glucose-6 deficiency phosphate dehydrogenase or favism. Um, so that was something I thought interesting. Uh, uh, G, 
uh, let's see, what is it called? Um, GDP six, I think. Uh, anyways, um, it is something that apparently is very necessary. Now, I took a look at this in dogs, and there was just a, a, a quick study that I uh, t uh, was able to review um, that said they found one in 3,300 dogs that had something uh, similar to this. So uh, maybe in animals, not quite so significant. Um, maybe in humans as well, I'm not sure. But uh, one of the things ozone therapy does is actually increase this enzyme. Um, so for, for patients who don't have a severe glucose 6 deficiency, um, you're going to actually see a benefit in, in the increase of this enzyme. Anyways, that has been, this has been five minutes of proof. That's all the time we have for today. Uh, we'll see you next week.